Article 26, Paragraph 4 of the India-USA Treaty Ownership of a Foreign Company Now, what this means is that, you know, if there are two companies, both are Indian companies, right? In one case, the shareholder is a foreign company. In the other case, the shareholder is an Indian company, right? If there are certain tax benefits which are available to the company where the ownership is Indian, those same benefits cannot be denied to the company which has a foreign shareholding, right? Let's look at the provision of the paragraph and see how does it applies. Enterprise of a contracting state, the capital of which is wholly or partly owned or controlled directly or indirectly by one or more residents of the other contracting state. So in this example, if this was ICO, the entire capital of this was owned by EFCO. Right? So this ICO is going to fall under this first part. Shall not be subjected in the first mentioned state, which is India, to any taxation or any requirement connected therewith, which is other or more burdensome than the taxation or connected requirements to which other similar enterprises of the first mentioned state are subjected. So ICO cannot be subjected to any tax or any connected requirement which is different or more burdensome than the similar requirement which is applicable to a similar enterprise of India. Right? But this is subject to certain exceptions. So if this Indian company is subjected to transfer pricing, the Indian company when I say the Indian company which is a subsidiary of a foreign company, but the other company which has domestic shareholders is not subject to transfer pricing. That is something where Article 26, Paragraph 4 will not apply. Deduction of interest only at the time of payment. That's also something where Article 26, Paragraph 4 may not apply depending on the terms of the treaty. Claim for carry forward of loss due to change in shareholding. Right? Now, this is something which we need to look at because there's a case on this particular aspect. 